Hi everybody, welcome to reviewing my collection, looking at my collection, looking at my stuff, the stuff that's in my collection. Today we're talking about the Wild Hearts. Now before I start on talking about my collection of the Wild Hearts, this is not a complete discography of the Wild Hearts uh, or anything like that. I don't do anything like that. This is not a complete history of the Wild Hearts. This is not anything like that. This is my collection. My collection, pretty much in every single one I'll do um, like this. I haven't got a complete collection. I'm not a completist in any way. Stuff comes along that I go, eh, and I stop listening to bands. Uh, then I might get back into them at a later date and go, ooh, that's better. But, but I'd never bother with the albums I don't like uh, so much, most of the time, unless something comes along for a quid, in which case I might go, ooh, check it out. And then I go like, ooh, it's more awesome, I missed out on this. Or I go like, oh, I still hate it. That's the way I do things. That's the way I live. Most people live like this. I know there are other people out there that if they buy an album by a group and they like it, they have to buy all the rest, even if they don't. They have to pretend that they like them. I don't pretend. I either like or I dislike, so yeah, that's the way it goes. So anyway, to keep videos short-ish, ish, short-ish, I have to speak really fast and get stuff through. Uh, because, you know, people's attention spans seem to be, seem to be shrinking all the time. I, I, I'm weird. I go to YouTube and I go like, ooh, that's a 30 minute thing. Oh, I've listened to this because it's something I'm interested in. Um, will people discover the Wild Hearts through me, or will Wild Hearts fans tune in to say, "What's he going to be going about?" I'm going to upset them, probably. Um, I'm a Wild Hearts fan-ish because I don't like every single thing they've done. Uh, apparently, to some people, you have to like everything by a band or an artist to be a fan, which is bollocks. Uh, you can enjoy a single album. By an artist. I would, I would go to at least a single album by an artist and be a fan of that artist. You don't have to like anything else they do. Uh, you can be a fan because you're a fan of that record. Uh, that's all it goes down to. But, you know, some people don't agree with that because, you know, they, they don't have minds. So, now that I've upset some people who haven't got minds, let's go on to the first release that I've got in my hot little hand. This is Don't Be Happy, Just Worry. This was uh, a double EP that was released, that I grabbed. It featured the uh, Mondo Akimbo A Go Go EP uh, and the Don't Be Happy EP. Um, this is a fantastic intro to their uh, to the Wild Hearts. Uh, before I carry on, what are the Wild Hearts? I just thought, what are the Wild Hearts? What can you class the Wild Hearts as? Um, rock and roll? Pop punk? Uh, pub rock? Sort of greasy garagey, punky, rocky, they've got commercial choruses, they've got heavy metal riffing breakdowns, uh, they've got all sorts of stuff going on, they can even have progressive rock moments, they've got several, a couple of albums with loads of stuff you can go progressive, 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 those are the ones I really like, as probably most people who watch this channel will go like, oh he likes them because of that, but I like their rock and roll as well. I like their rock and roll as well. Um, this was the first one that came out. The thing about the Wild Hearts is their rock and roll stuff. They really mix things up. No, no two songs ultimately sound the same most of the most of the time. Most of the time, most of my connection, it's like that. Uh, but they have let me down now and again. Oh. Uh, another thing you could say about the Wild Hearts. What can you say? You can mix in. I forgot the name. Sex Pistols. Get the Sex Pistols. Turn them around. Throw in some uh, Beatles. Stir it around. Uh, and then Pop Punk. Stir it around. And the Rock and Roll. Stir it around. You're basically getting the mix of what they do. So on this EP, this introduced me to the Wild Arts. This has got some fantastic stuff. Uh, I got a little bored of some at a later later on, but the Mondo Akimbo Go Go EP which has got Turned American, Crying Over Nothing, Nothing Ever Changes But The Shoes and Liberty Cap. That's the EP that I really like on this. The other one with Spider-Mania, Something Weird, Weekend and Dreaming in A. They're okay. They're okay. They're, they're good. But they were not a patch on the first one. And the Liberty Cap is the heaviest one on this double EP. It's spectacular. Really like it. Really like Liberty Cap. It's a great song. It'd be in my top ten, I think. My top ten if I do a top ten. Well, shall I do a top ten? I'll do a top ten. it probably come a little later like a week's time or something like that, just to annoy people. Uh, but, you know, annoying people is what I do. So, on to my next part of my collection. I'm doing everything in order as they released. But, surprisingly, I got everything in the order it was released. 
then just flipping backwards and forwards and get stuff like that. I've the next one I got Earth vs. the Wild Hearts. If you can see that in the glare. Let's see uh, can you see that without it? Oh I don't know. Oh I don't know. It's very glary. Um and that is Ginger on the front. Ginger is the main guy behind the Wild Hearts. He writes all the songs basically. Uh, and he would go nuts if he didn't write songs. They've released tons and tons of music. Um, I've only got a small sample of what they release. Basically, I think they've only released about eight albums in over 30 years, about 30 years of existence. Eight albums. Uh, but they've released tons of singles and EPs and stuff that aren't featured on those albums. Um, the recent release of the album last year, I think it was, I haven't listened to that one yet, uh, and I know that a few months later they released an EP. That's six or seven song EP and it's like Phew. you just can't stop writing uh, sometimes that can lead to a lot of stuff that's a bit samey but if you enjoy a lot of rock and roll samey type stuff and you enjoy his voice and enjoy the style um, if that's your oeuvre as it were then you'll get on with that kind of thing because that's basically what this album is much more rock and roll stuff now I want to like move on a lot expand a lot but of course this is the first album this was the EP so the album being very similar to the EP didn't bother me at all Greetings from Shitsville is a fantastic opening start but you've got uh, Everlone on there which is started to go like ooh, a bit more uh, additional stuff going on within that song uh, Million Miles Away Girl is a wonderful sort of balladic sort of song it's not really a ballad but you know it's got one of those sort of dreamy sort of styles to it my baby is a head fuck is awesome and it's especially awesome because it's then followed by sucker punch which is a sucker punch it goes at the end of it as well it's just got some great songs on here very well recommended if you like your rock and roll pop punky type type stuff it's just got everything now the problem with the wild hearts for me is that i like to change and move on I like things that, you know, a new album comes out and it's not exactly the same as the last album. It has a, has a movement forward. They made a huge mistake with me. They brought out Fishing for Luckies. Huge mistake. Because this is fucking awesome. This is basically their progressive rock album. Uh, more than any of the other, the other stuff they've done, if they've got progressive song here and there, this is their progressive rock album. This is just stunningly good. It kicked off with a glorious. It's like Life is Life a Love Bank, I Want an Overdraft is a, is a nice simple TT type stuff. Uh, but then you've got Schizophonic, you've got Do the Channel Bop, you've got Geordie Wonderland which is a, a simple commercial song unlike any other that I've heard them do. And Sky Babies is just... <gasps> I mean it's like 11 minutes of spectacularness. The whole damn album is just chock full of fantastic Rock and roll, progressive, progressive, progressive and roll, progressive and roll. That's well. This this just ruined them for me, ruined them, ruined them because it's just stunning. I would recommend this to anybody who likes a bit of progressive stuff that wants to hear something played differently. They've heard rock and roll music. Hey, let's hear it in a different sort of format. This is the one to get. This is the one to get. This just it's just brilliant. Which is why the next release. Yes, it does say "fuck you" on it. Um, was such a letdown. I, s I heard later on that basically that's uh, there. You got a nice velvet sleeve there. Uh, I heard later on that basically this was supposed to be with Fish for Lucky's a double album, so it would have been a mix of progressive stuff and straightforward stuff, and it would have probably worked for me. And I'll tell you why that is in a bit. But this was basically Earth vs. the Wild Hearts again. It was lots and lots of rock and roll. Um, I Wanna Go Where The People Go kicked it off. That is a great poppy rock song. It's just fabulous. It's fabulous. And it just kicks everything off. You go, yeah, here we go. And then it just sort of doesn't really kick off. Um, none of the songs really got into my head very much, although I Wanna Go Where The People Go is in my top ten Wild Heart songs really. It's a fantastic fun song. Um, the rest were just like going through the same sort of thing I'd heard before with Wild Hearts and I think if they'd been mixed up 
within uh, an album with various different, you know, a big double album with various different uh, styles and stuff, um, then it probably would have worked. But for me, it was like, no. I mean, this year, the year this came out, 1995, uh, and it was like, to me, it was a big PHUQ to me. It was like, no, I've gone back to that style. Uh, I'm not as interested. I'm not into that as much. So for me, it was like, oh, this could be the end of my journey with the Wild Hearts. And it would have been fine, because they brought out a couple of albums that were stunningly brilliant. Uh, and then one that was, for me, not so great. But, you know, I've seen other people there that love this album very much, and it's like it's not an attack on them by any means. It's just personal opinion on where you feel the music is in your life. And I was not really invested in that. But I did learn my lesson. Because uh, in 2003, they brought out The Wild Hearts Must Be Destroyed. Now, I bought this about a year or two later, down the road, uh, because it was in a bargain bin. I thought, you know what, I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to give it a go. Um, this is a really short album. Uh, there's 11 songs, but it's about just over 30 minutes, and it is effectively even more pop-punky than anything they've done. And I didn't like anything on it. And I shouldn't... I don't know if to put it... Did the, nothing sank into this tiny brain of mine. Nothing from this album affected me at all. I could put this album on and every song to me sounds like every song. Uh, it's... I mean, because before I did this, I actually listened to it again. Put myself through it again. Um, and it still doesn't do anything for me. Nothing. It's really weird. Uh, because I know they follow sing paths to PHUQ and uh, the Wild Arts and stuff, and they is pumping out loads and loads of he's got a, lots of skill at pumping out good toe tappers, good you know stuff like that. But I can't even put it into words. Just it's dead to me. And so were the Wild Hearts. Or were they? You see, last year I heard a song by them. Rooting for the bad guy, which I have actually done, linked linked with this. Uh, you'll see it at the end of this video to click on to go like, let's see what they sound like. They, the music hasn't changed in the sense that they're still rock and roll, still punk and roll, they're still Beatles and Scorp uh, Scorpions and Sex Pistols and all that sort of stuff that I said before. They're all put into a big melting pot. But unlike Wild Hearts Need to Be Destroyed, Rooting for the Bad Guy is on. The album Wild Hearts. The Wild Hearts. Um, yeah, self titled. 2007, this one came out, four years later. I'd, I'd basically cut the Wild Hearts out from now. They, they, they'd finish me off with this with this, with this one. I wasn't interested in that sound anymore. I, I thought, they're not gonna, they're gonna, they've found the path they wanna follow. It's not my path. Fine, we go our separate ways. Loved most of what I got from them. Fine. But then, of course, Root for the Bad Guy. And that's a great song. So I had to get this album. I could only find this album second hand. I think it might be available again now, um, but I could only find it second hand. This is the album, really, the style, anyway, the uh, mix that I think Fisher for Luckies and the PHUQ album were going to be. You know, a mix of progressive, experimental, and straight ahead rock and roll. Because that's what's in here. Root for the Bad Guy. The New Flesh, Slaughtered Authors, Destroy All Monsters. Uh, you know, I think uh, New Flesh is a bit more rock and rolly, but Slaughtered Authors, Ruby the Bad Guy, Destroy All Monsters are nice, nice, progressively styled sort of songs, full of great heavy metal breakdowns, uh, riffing, I should say, along with the wonderful, sweet, you know, pop punk choruses and melodies and things in there, as well as going all over the place. This album is fantastically good. It's fantastically good. Uh, but it's not something that brings me, brings me back to the Wild Hearts. I'd have to hear something else by them from one of the realms before I bothered to get another album by them. Um, but ultimately, this made me go, ah. This, of course, was 13 years ago. Uh, but they released an album last year, which I haven't actually listened to at all. Uh, 
so I'll make it around to listen to that one day. But as you can probably tell, my nose is like, uh, because I've got a bit of hay fever and it's blocking me up just when I decide to do something like this. So uh, I will stop in a minute. I uh, hope you enjoyed my little overview, a uh, little review of my collection because it's literally a simple review of my collection, what I liked, what I didn't like. Um, and I hope uh, there were a few songs, titles in there that you go, like, I'll check out that song title. But if you don't want to, just listen to along with Rooty for the Bad Guy with me on my next video, which is coming up with the bit that corner. Will it be that corner or will it be that corner? It's somewhere, somewhere there'll be a box, or, or down here, or down here, uh, a box going like, hey, click on this, go to this song. Hope you enjoyed this video. I uh, hope you didn't go on too long. I've tried to keep it short. If you want me to lengthen something like this out and talk in more depth about reasons why I like and why I dislike various things about a band, uh, about their music and stuff, as I'm doing a review, let me know. And I will do it if you want it to be short and like, hello, this is what I've got. This is last last album, blah, blah, last album. Then I'll do it after that as well. Ooh, just dropped it. Um, enough for me.